views and opinions expressed in this podcast by the host or the guest do not necessarily reflect the views of Paranormal Buzz Radio or its sponsors. Use of any material produced by Paranormal Buzz Radio without express written consent is strictly prohibited. For information on everything Paranormal Buzz Radio has to offer, visit our website, ParanormalBuzzRadio.com. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Listener discretion is advised. Hi, I'm Caitlin Russell. Welcome to the Healing Light Podcast. I am a psychic intuitive who's been reading tarot cards for over 25 years. I'm also Reiki certified. Join me as I read cards, share intuitive messages, promote healing, and much, much more. Hi, everybody. It's Caitlin from the Healing Light Podcast. Yay. Uh, yay. <laughs> Before I get to my special guest, I just want to remind everyone that you can find me, your the Healing Light Podcast, on the Speaker app, as well as anywhere else you get your podcasts, on my social media, Instagram, TikTok, and my YouTube channel, Facebook page, The Healing Light NH. So please feel to, please feel free to reach out to me uh, to comment on give me feedback on the show if you have an idea for the show if there's a guest you'd like to uh, see me um, hear me interview or if you want to be a guest by all means please comment and send me a message or you can email me at the healing light one that's the healing light number one at gmail.com so I have a very special guest tonight, and I'm excited to speak with him because I was looking at his background, and it's just something that I haven't, we haven't touched on, but I am um, definitely fascinated by it. So this is um, Matthew Bearden, who is a light worker and priest hierophant, and he's here to talk about um, what he does for light workers and uh, his gift and everything else. So. Welcome, Matthew, to the Healing Light Podcast. Well, thank you for having me, Caitlin. It's good yeah, to be here. Yeah, very good to have you on. So what, I, what I'd like to do is kind of get um, our listeners a little bit, a little bit, uh, know a little bit more about you. So if you could tell me a little bit about your, uh, your background, your gift, when you, what first, you know, what were your what your first inspirational idea was and and where you are now and what you do and all that fun stuff. Okay. Uh, it started with Reiki. Um, I had a good friend who um, was a Reiki master and she was wanting to hold a class for, actually it was a class for Reiki for a bunch of Gardnerian witches. And she wanted somebody to be the uh, Reiki dummy. So I got uh, roped into that. And the Gardnerians were an interesting crew. You expected them to be in uh, suits and ties and fancy dresses. Uh, No, they came up uh, in leather and with um, motorcycles. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it was quite a surprise to me to see them doing that. And uh, over the course of the day, I received Reiki from many people. And I said, wow, this is really cool. I want some of this. So I uh, I ended up working with my friend later at a later date. But I went to the local community college to uh, go to, to a class there. And that is when the journey started. And after that, I've been uh, attuned two more times just to make sure. A little bit of OCD going on there. Um, And since then, I have taken, like, a lot of energy work modalities. 
and I've got a handful of them that are really good and that I feel comfortable uh, offering to clients and students. Um, so, in the middle of all that, I was also uh, working with the Fellowship of Isis, which I'm still in, working with now. And their goal is to promote the female side of deity. And it's really a fantastic group. The liturgy is beautiful. Uh, I've gotten so much out of it. Uh, received the mystery, which is a little term that we use in the FOI. Um, and so I've got a bunch of academic wallpapering at the moment. And how much good it does matter, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> really, I know, it's all what you do with it. Oh, thank you very much for the biography. And, you know, it just, what just caught my ear was when you said about people, uh, you expect people to be a certain way in our community, and then they show up in leather and on motorcycles. And it just makes me, just makes me smile because, you you know, when you think about, you know, what is the typical light worker? What are they like? And then they're re we're really from all sorts, all, all walks of life, really, you know, all different yeah. nationalities, cultures, tall, short, whatever, you know, body types. So yeah. I, I'm glad you said that because I find that I, I found that really cool. Um, so I wanted to hear more about the I hope I'm saying this right. The, the Lyceum. Is that how you say it? Yes, it's always yes. Okay, of Little yes. Egypt, and and you mentioned clients and and others, and um, you provide a service to light workers as well. And, and before you, I'm sorry, let me interrupt you, but before um, you go into that, um, can you define for our listeners what what a light worker is? Because I don't think a lot of people know what a light work what that means. Yes. A light worker is a person who, through a process called attunement, which is essentially tweaking uh, people's energy fields in various places, has attained an ability or talent that they did not have before. Mm -hmm. So, for in terms of Reiki, for instance, that would be um, the gift of healing. Mm -hmm. Uh, for the Lightarians, which I uh, really enjoy a lot, it would be uh, raising your vibration to a higher oh. level. Mm. Yeah, yeah, very cool. And it, uh, yeah, so you progress, you accelerate your uh, spiritual progress, mm -hmm. and move forward as quickly as you can. And to be prepared for the new earth, the new uh, energy. Mm -hmm. And, okay. uh, yeah. Oh, great. So, uh, going back to my, my first question, so what does uh, the Lyceum of Egypt, Little Egypt, what does that do for, for lightworkers? Uh, good question. I have a list of some of the things that I offer. Uh, we do FY work, and um, of course, because I see him as an FY body, and we do um, energy work, light work. So there's a lot of different stuff that I offer on that. Um, <clears throat> Specifically, uh, there is Shambhala, Reiki, Karunaki, um, Celestial Golden Chi, Seishim, all kinds of different <clears throat> versions and takes on energy work. Okay. All right. So, so you take uh, someone like like me. Um, uh, and I, I'm, I would consider myself a light worker, and you use these various uh, modalities, um, 
on someone, and that's does, and that is that to help them utilize their gift, or is it help them to like protect their 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 energy? Is it like a, a psychic or light work or therapy session? What is that? What does it do? Yes, yes, and yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we um, open up channels that uh, were not open before. And we help to provide protection and balance. And um, in terms of protection, of course, the uh, really good uh, thing that I offer is the lesser banishing ritual. And that is where students always rebel because they do not like that technique for whatever reason. So, um, I try to um, give people some type of option for protection just in case anything nasty is attracted at any point. Mm. Um, that kind of uh, goes in the topic. I'm all over the place now, all, all kinds mm. of tangents. Um, <laughs> that actually goes along with Lightarian Clearing which is going to get any kind of nastiness away from you. Okay, yeah, because I, I, I don't think about this. And, you know, it's, it's always said that as someone who's a light worker, that I'm, and I'm, I do talk about protecting your energy and you're kind of dispelling that off you. But, you know, I didn't think that, hey, this would be, uh, uh, something that I, I I would benefit from because yet yeah, we encounter a lot of powerful energy, negative energy, positive energy. A lot of we take on a lot, uh, you know, as healers and you know, as psychics, we're taking on that energy. And it just uh, I didn't even think about hey, you know, I need to might need um, to be protected from that, and so that I don't uh, you know I I don't go into this um, you know spiral of of, uh, you know, just not being able to utilize my, my gift as much as I want to. So I, I may take you up <laughs> on your services. Um, I yeah. wanted to, yeah, I wanted to ask you, and we all know about Reiki attunement. I mean, I've talked about Reiki, you know, um, you know, Melody Larson, we've had her on our show talk about Reiki, oh, but uh, I, I'm sorry. She's yeah. She's a fantastic practitioner. She's what? She's a fantastic practitioner. Oh, yes, she is. She's absolutely wonderful. And uh, I'll have to get out to uh, – she's probably about an hour from me. I'll, I'll, have to, I'll have to book with her because I could I could use a session, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so I want to talk about uh, – on you talk about shamanic healing. So I've heard of shamans, and they're mystical, and I don't really know about it, a lot about it. So – what what for what is shamanic healing and, and I know that's one of the services that you have. I can address that, but I think that you're confusing Shambhala for shamanic. Oh oh. oh I can okay. address that. I've got uh, a couple of uh, shamanic attunements. Okay. So it's where you go on a guided journey to one of three worlds which is the lower world, which is very elementally oriented and earth-oriented and safe. And uh, there's the upper world, which is uh, very much about the angels and the deities. It's also safe. However, when you get to the middle world, which is our world, and start uh, foraying into that, um, that world is a little bit dangerous because of negativity in it. Mm. Uh, I, I think that most negativity is generated uh, by human beings. Um, Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we do things like uh, spirit retrieval. After someone has had a trauma or gone through a negative experience, we find a way to loot, bring back that lost part of the soul. Hmm. And uh, it's 
a practice that requires probably a lifetime of work to do well. Hmm. Yeah, uh, I um. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, shamanism typically in- employs drums, hmm. and uh, that's how you get into trance with it. And um, I have a shamanic system that I offer for free because I pledged that I would only offer it for free. It's called uh, Amadeus Shamanic Healing. And I've gotten into heated arguments with shamans over the net as to whether or not it is actually uh, shamanism or not. Uh, I say that it is, and they uh, beg to differ. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I don't wonder why that is. Well, you know, uh, I, uh, yeah, I don't, well, you know, we can all have our different opinions, I guess, of what it is, but it sounds to me like what you're offering is a, a deeply spiritual uh, uh, healing to those who really need it. And I, I know that uh, for myself, I've, I've, I've spoken to many others who um, do come from trauma and, you know, it's, it, it, it absolutely can knock you down and wear you out. At the same time, you know, if I know for me, uh, it has allowed me to become uh, a more caring and a more caring, and compassionate, and I, I want to help others. So, um, you know, and then so it sounds like that is definitely something that would attract uh, someone, someone like me to get that, to get that experience. And to me, I think if people kind of pick and choose about, well, if you don't do this, it's not that uh, you're not allowed in this. Yeah. You know, and I think to myself, well, you know, there we're, we're evolving. We're always evolving and we learn things and things change. And as long as your goal, I feel is to, you know, cause no harm to anyone. It's only to lift people up and heal them. Then for me, it, it's, you know, it's a no-brainer right there. I mean, would you agree with that? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then I wanted to hear about um, the mysteries of the goddess. I, I love goddesses. I, I, I love goddesses. I have some stuff. Yeah. Well, that would be my, do my FOI work. Mm-hmm. And uh, our goal is to rediscover and bring back the religion of the goddess to earth once more after she's been sleeping on the inner planes. Mm-hmm. And so we have, we had a fantastic uh, co-founder named Lady Olivia Robertson, who has unfortunately passed recently, where actually in the last four or five years, I guess. And we, Research the rites through a series of questions that we refer to as the study guide. Well, this is how I teach it anyway, and how I was taught. And uh, once we've researched them adequately, we actually have the student perform them. And after a certain uh, number of rites within one of the daughter societies, a person uh, becomes... I don't know what, uh, I guess you could say a master. That's more of a Reiki term, but Mm -hmm. they become a master of that particular kind of energy. So we've got, we offer a priesthood, hierophancy, um, druidry, alchemy, and there's also a group called the Noble Order of Terra, which is all about chivalry and um, the environment. Which is the one I'm working on now myself, actually. Oh, and okay. I'm, kind of, I'm kind of taking the long way around with that. Mm-hmm. I I only need four rituals under my belt for that, but uh, my mentor and I decided that it would be best if I uh, did more like twelve. Oh wow, that's a lot. <laughs> it's a, a lot. lot. It's it's a tremendous commitment, but it's worth 
every moment. I'm sure. Yeah, you always want to be. Uh, I feel with your with your gift that you have um, that you always want to be growing and learning. I I feel that you know that you can learn for a lifetime. You really can, and there's a lot. So it sounds like you have. You have like a uh, like a community of people. I mean, do people like go in person, or are there like are there like virtual meetings, or how does that how does that work? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> you can absolutely have people present if you're lucky enough to have them in your area. I have not been so lucky at this point, so I'm doing the rituals alone. Um, they're still awesome, but it's just me. And um, you can do them over a distance because same the same deal with uh, energy work. You can do both of those over a distance. Right. And um, if you're doing it at the same time, you will usually feel the presence of the other people who are doing it at the same time as you are. Okay. And, um, so, yeah, it's... Hopefully, you have the uh, people to build a community. Uh, the nearest one that I'm aware of is up in Chicago. Mm-hmm. And every year, uh, usually the end of September, they have a goddess festival. Oh, wow. I want to go. <laughs> I should, I should, no, it's wonderful. They hold one of uh, Lady Olivia's rituals for, uh, mm-hmm. for the public. And there's a... Uh, Reception and it's it's wonderful. I got to go to the Parliament of World Religions uh, last August, and the FOI held a uh, fantastic reception for all goddess worshippers who had come along to uh, experience the uh, Parliament. Wow! All right, I gotta. I have. To, I have to do it someday. All right. That goes on the bucket list. <laughs> that goes on the bucket list. All right, absolutely. And I, I, I would, yeah, I would absolutely love to do that. So, you know, your service uh, to me is really much needed um, in this world. I, I say this all the time that we're, life is so chaotic. We've got wars going on, headlines, news, and all the bad stuff. We need more positive people. We need that positive energy. The world is is really hurting a lot right now. So this, what you offer to people, uh, you know, I don't think people realize that, that, you know, you know, there are therapists who need therapists, doctors need doctors and, and light workers need light workers. And it just makes you a better, a better um, practitioner of all that. Um, so if if someone wanted to uh, reach out to you and sign up or you know get involved with that, where can they find you? How do they reach you? Um, through my email or my uh, website address. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Should, should, should I give that out now or? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we want people to contact you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, my. My website is littleegyptlyceum.com and my email is wunjawolf9 at gmail.com. That's W-U-N-J-O-W-O-L-F, the number nine at gmail.com. All right. Thank you so much for that. So everybody who is a light worker, you know, <laughs> it was Matthew. You need him. And Keith <laughs> needs to get to the Goddess Festival. Uh, I gotta talk to my wife about this. Uh, okay, so I want to thank you very much, Matthew, for being a guest on the Healing Light podcast. I want to thank everyone for listening in, and just as a reminder again, you can find the Healing Light podcast on the Spreaker app or anywhere you listen to your podcasts. Find me on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, TikTok. And even X, I'm trying, I don't really care for X, but I guess I should be back there, because some people are, at The Healing Light NH. Send me a message, send me an email at thehealinglight1 at gmail.com. Thank you once again, Matthew, and I thank you, uh, everyone, for a great show. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.